Hello. Welcome to the lecture on island biogeography. Today we'll be learning about factors that influence biodiversity on islands. Biodiversity typically refers to the number of species in a particular location, so therefore it can also be called species richness. Species richness or biodiversity is very important to ecologists. For one reason, uh, when we lose a species, we, it's lost forever. Another reason biodiversity is important to ecologists is because ecosystems with high biodiversity or with a lot of different species tend to be more stable over time. They can recover quickly after a disturbance, much better than ecosystems with low biodiversity. Island biodiversity is a theory explaining the species richness of different islands. It's based mainly on two factors, the distance of the island from the mainland or any other large body of land, and the size of the island, how big it is. Distance is important because it affects the immigration rate. Immigration is the number of new species arriving on the island. So islands that are close to the mainland will have a high rate of immigration because more species can get there from the mainland, whether by flying or swimming or even catching a ride on a raft of some kind. Islands that are far from the mainland will have a low immigration rate because it's difficult for new species to get there. Now the size of the island affects the extinction rate or the rate at which species are lost from the island. Small islands tend to have a high rate of extinction because there's a lot of um, competition for resources and so more species are going to be unable to compete successfully and will go extinct. Large islands have more resources and therefore have a lower rate of extinction. Species are more likely to survive on large islands. Now, immigration and extinction are the two factors that determine species richness. Immigration increases species richness by bringing new species to the island. Extinction reduces species richness, obviously because those species are lost from the island. But in turn, species richness can also change the rates of immigration and extinction. High species richness can reduce the immigration rate because a higher proportion of the total number of species um, that are present on the mainland are already on the island. So a new individual arriving on the island is less likely to represent a new species. High species richness, on the other hand, increases the extinction rate because you have more different species competing for the same resources, so they're more likely to go extinct. Now, species richness is determined by immigration and extinction in such a way that when extinction rate equals the immigration rate, then species, species richness stays the same over time. When you lose as many species in a year as you gain new species, then you have the same species richness from one year to the next. This is a graph that demonstrates the main concepts of island biogeography. You can see the x-axis, the independent variable on this graph, is the number of species, how many different species live on the island, from zero to many. On the left-hand side, we see an axis representing the rate of immigration. Rate of immigration is shown in blue, and you can see that the rate of immigration goes down as the number of species go up. Again, because more and more of the species from the mainland have already arrived on the island. Eventually, the immigration rate would be zero if the number of species on the island was exactly the same as the number of species on the mainland. On the right-hand side, you can see an axis that represents the rate of extinction. The rate of extinction is shown in the red lines. The rate of extinction goes up as the number of species go up. More and more species mean more and more competition for resources, and so more chances of going extinct. Now, if you look back at the blue lines showing the rate of immigration, you'll see there are two different blue lines, one representing islands that are close to the mainland, which have a higher rate of immigration, and the other representing islands that are far from the mainland, which have a lower rate of immigration. If you look at the two red lines showing the rate of extinction, you'll see that the upper line represents small islands, which are going to have a higher rate of extinction, and the lower red line represents large islands, which are going to have a lower rate of extinction. And then you'll notice that there are four different places where a red line crosses a blue line. And each of these crossing points is represented by one of the letters on the x-axis, A, B, C, or D. So A, for example, represents the place where the rate of immigration on a far island crosses the rate of extinction on a small island. 
So A represents the total number of species on a far small island, which you can see is going to be relatively low. The letter D, on the other hand, represents the point where the uh, immigration rate on a close island crosses the extinction rate on a large island. We said that when the immigration rate equals the extinction rate, then the number of species stays the same. So D represents a stable number of species on a large island that's close to the mainland.